Hi, I'm Patty Markham Peterson, medical intuitive, quantum healer, teacher, mentor, and I'm wanting to share some time with you today around enhancing your dream recall, connecting to your dreams for your highest good, to enhance your life. I have a lot of clients that ask about them, and I love to have somebody come back and say, Patty, I had this dream. What do you think? You know, we can offer some guidance on symbolism. I didn't used to be so interested in dreams till I had an event happen, and that's the gift. A dream helped to awaken me to my connection to all that is, and all the ways we're being guided and supported. There was a day in the spring of 2002, I was waking up cozy next to my husband, and I recalled my dream, and the feeling I had that morning was so heavy. It was dark, and that's a key. Pay attention to how you feel after a dream jot that down. I didn't document the day of this dream what, when that happened, but I know it was in the spring sometime of 02 because I woke up and I knew I was going to be alone. It was a pervasive knowing. There's another clue. In the dream, I was walking in a dark tunnel and at the end there was light. I just knew I was alone, going to be alone, going to be alone. And so I told my husband and he kind of didn't pay a lot of attention, went off to work and went into the kitchen to prepare breakfast for my kids. And my 13 year old daughter came in and she said, mom, I had a dream last night that dad died. I literally had to grab the counter because my intuition was screaming, pay attention. I thought this was too much of a coincidence. There aren't coincidences. And I, well, that's interesting, you know, and comforted her in whatever way I knew at the time because I didn't know what to do with this at the, too much other than I contacted a dear friend who's a massage therapist and she told me to come over and she was rubbing me and she said, Patty, a physical death in a dream doesn't always mean it's about a physical death. She had done some study research on dreams and I said, I believe that. It can be, you know, an aspect of their personality, some aspect of their life that's gonna fall away, change. So I did my best to work through, let that go. But I remember crying at the time. It felt so heavy and profound. Well, it was July 10th, 2002, when a police officer walked into my office and he said, Patricia Peterson. I said, yes. He said, your husband was killed this morning. And apparently the first words out of my mouth I screamed were, I knew this was going to happen before I, I fainted. So on some level of my being, I was being prepared. I still had a long journey of grief, yet it was such a pivotal experience in me opening to who we are beyond this physical being. How are we connected to our guidance, to God, to the infinite, to source, to spirit? And dreams are one of those ways to really enhance that. And so in the months later, I would have a lot of dreams, and even others did, of me having a baby. And I go, well, I'm, you know, 41, 42, I don't know, without a partner, and anyway. <laughs> um, I knew, though, that the birth was, a new me was birthing. What aspect of me is rebirthing? That's what a pregnancy dream can be. See, dreams are symbolic, metaphoric. Some are prophetic like mine. I have had another, I've had of one prior to, um, I knew somebody was in a van spinning out of control, heading toward a ditch. And the next day I found out that happened to my sister. And in the dream, I knew they were gonna be okay. And she was. She had called on angels and she didn't go in this deep ditch as she was in this van with her children. I had also a prophetic dream um, six years prior to our flood, that something was significant was going to happen to my, the home I grew up in, and it did. Yet none of these was I given guidance on what to do to help, other than continuing on my spiritual journey, which does make an impact. If you have a prophetic dream and you are meant to do something, you will be given that guidance. We need to trust that. I don't wanna scare anybody. You wake up and you think of somebody you haven't in a while and you have this real need to connect with them. 
please do. We never know why. And um, so pay attention. That's the, here's seven tip, tips to encourage your dream recall and connection, okay? And I'll have clients tell me, Patty, I don't dream, I don't remember. I believe you do dream, everybody does. It's our remembering, it's the connection between the conscious and the subconscious. We wanna build that bridge. So during our sleep, our spirit leaves our body. We travel, there's a lot that happens there. I encourage, here's some tips, okay? Number one is to have a dream journal. I keep a dream journal by my bed. And sometimes I am so, I wake, first wake, even in the middle of the night, and you know there was a dream. Sometimes I don't feel like it. But when I do, when I sit up and write that down, I'm always happy. There's so many different ways that we receive our guidance or a connection to your spirit guides, a deeper connection uh, to ancestors. I've had dream visits from others who have passed on into spirit, my parents and other dear friends. So it's wonderful to write it down because we can lose, within minutes of waking, we can lose that, that connection to that dream. So I have oodles of journals filled with those remembrances. And when you date it, when you look back, you know exactly how much time had passed. You know, one for me was a couple months, the next, you know, prof one was within days, another prophetic one was years. In spirit world, the time really has no relevance. So the first tip is keep a journal by your bed. I also encourage you to, to, to clear the energy in your bedroom. Keep it conducive for good dreaming. Get out the electromagnetic uh, influences. Don't have your cell phone right by your bed. I, I encourage you to put crystals. Um, I have crystalline pyramids that help clear EMFs. Put things you love underneath your bed and around you. Enhance that. And as you're getting ready for bed, um, clear your energy. I teach the container practice, as do my mentors. It's on their website, shriandkira.com. Check that out under practices. And prepare for bed, often, you know, calming down. Try not to have screen time. Setting, getting your system to slow down and not be so stimulated up here. Spending a little time in meditation, that helps the third eye, which can help your connection to your divine spirit and to see beyond. So uh, meditating, looking at a candle perhaps. How about soft music? Going to sleep with something very soothing and relaxing. I, I like to put one hand on my heart, one on my forehead and breathe connecting these two so we get more out of our head that's so active during the day and more into our heart. This is where your wisdom is. This is what's wanting to come forward. This is where we connect to all that is. It's not an end point though. It's to open up in here too, okay? Um, you could even write before going to bed an intention, an intention on what you'd like to connect with in your dream. I did this a lot in those early years after my husband transitioned. I wanted to see him so much. I wanted to have that connection. And that's part of why I, I del delved deeper into dreams and collected books on dream interpretations. Trust what you're called to. And so I'd write my intention to please connect with my dear husband. I want to see and feel his love. I've done that with my parents. I've held uh, intentions to have greater clarity on, on direction with uh, decisions and then you pay attention in the morning when you wake up write down how do I feel was there any symbolism is there any other words that I remember chat anything and even if you don't just start writing I sometimes just start writing what I felt or know and consciously you may not know but it may flow from your sub deeper wisdom self any form of a prayer, your own prayer before bed, connect to your higher guides, your true self, your higher wisdom, God, source energy, taking time to do that with sincerity. 
And as you get into bed, hold that. Hold that prayer. Hold that intention that in the morning you will connect with it for the highest good, no matter what it is, because there is no right or wrong. And this is just practicing to connect that, connect, uh, deepen that connection between conscious and unconscious part of the brain and your deeper wisdom and who you are. Feel your guides. Call them in if that feels right for you, your angels. And let it just be. No stress whether you remember them or not. One key I want to mention, if you see a theme, really pay attention. Many people have themes where somebody's chasing them. You truly can reprogram that. You can go into that dream on an unconscious level and say, and stand up and say, no, I'm stronger than this. And the more we recognize that in our conscious state, that can happen in the unconscious. I've, I've had clients tell me that. Wow, in that dream, it finally stopped because I stood up and said, no, I'm more than this. And this is not going to terrify me. I'm not running from my fears. Chasing dreams are often about some fear. What are we afraid to look at? And the more we trust who we are and not be afraid to look, miracles can happen. That awakening, that awareness can be a healing. So those are the, the common tips that I had, that there's no right or wrong, and it's a deeper connection to your divine self. Have fun with it. Any questions, send me a message. I'd love to hear. Namaste.